I'm Sid, and these are my best friends. My mom, Kim. My dad, Ty. My sister, Maddie. And our salty dog, Stella. We started our adventure refitting a Lagoon 450 before taking on the massive project of resurrecting a sunken 2021 Leopard 50. It's been one heck of a ride, but we're on this adventure to die with memories, not dreams, and live dauntless. We'll be back when I'm making noise. Oh my god! <laughs> it really opens up the space. It doesn't it? First, I need to still cut this wall and this floor out over here and build platforms for us to be able to put these appliances on. So that's gonna be the next step that you are about to see happen. Or this one's starting to permeate, so we ordered this magic 10 year, I don't know, got it from Defender, not sponsored. Um, who makes it? I'll put it down below on the screen. Uh, it's uh, like Raritan or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's like, it's like 10 year warranty against permeation because nobody likes to do this twice. So I am um, gonna, I flushed three and a half bowls full of fresh water through, hoping that that is enough to have no yum yums inside the tube. And now I'm gonna crawl under here I know I'm gonna have water pour down around my feet and my knees. It's gonna be unpleasant. I'm gonna get grabby and I'm gonna try not to yell at Kim for just being helpful. <laughs> so, okay, wish me luck. Luck. If it's any consolation, at least it's your poop and no one else's. <laughs> <laughs> no, Kim, no. Ah, boy, that leaks in a hurry. All right, vacuum. <laughs> In an effort to make um, less mess, I've been using vice grips to clamp off the, the bottom of this right here. So, hoping that, yeah, most of it stays in there. I don't know. Ew. You want some of this, Kim? No. Nom, nom, nom. All right, so you need to get your hands dirty too. I'm putting on gloves. I don't, don't want to touch your shit. <laughs> Hold on. Oh. Do you want me to hold this side of the tube so you have both hands free? I'm trying to get in here. So gross. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> Don't drop that tube. Oh, I have to. No. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. Uh, Can you feed it the, oh, no. Um. There's no good way to do this. <laughs> if I can keep. Do you want me to, keep, oh, oh boy. Do you want me to hold this one? Oops, I'm not even recording you at the moment. Sorry. <sighs> I have this one. Oh. I have it. It's all yours. Okay, I'm gonna give you this so you can record what you're doing or something. <laughs> oh. So nasty. Oh God. All right, so Robertson and Kane clamps everything. And when they clamp it, they also put Sika Flex on everything. So the reason I cut this above here is that I know that I'm gonna have to cut this piece of pipe off of this tube. So I'm gonna take the clamps off first and uh, then work it off with a knife. All right, so I'm gonna wipe that down with some sanitizer and uh, ugh, gross.
All right, so I'm gonna go get the rare tan hose. I bought 30 feet, which should be enough for all three um, heads. This is the only one that's currently permeating that I know of, but that's probably because it's the only one that the walls opened up on. So um, I am gonna just pull through what I need and then just cut off the excess and attach it to the top and we'll coil it up and leave the rest of it. Eh. I'll show you what the other stuff looks like. It's just this white, kind of looks like spa tube. It does say sanitation and potable water. Definitely don't interchange those. Blech. This stuff apparently has got, I believe, a butyl um, lining to it. I'll also put that on the screen so that you can, the name of it. But this is the stuff that um, I discovered when we were having uh, odor issues on the 45 and I never got around to putting it in because I couldn't get it during COVID. But there's a cool book written by a woman called Peggy Hall that uh, talks about, well, gross stuff and sanitation, how to keep odor out of your boat. And Raritan makes this stuff and it's supposed to have a 10 year warranty against any permeation. So because it's such an effort to get in here, I figured, you know what, it's only 10 feet and it's only about 10 or $11 a foot, if I remember correctly. And that sounds like a one-time job kind of purchase. So hopefully it'll be a long, 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 long time until I have to do this again. Okay. Raritan, sanitation, odor shield, 10 year warranty, butyl, 100 PSI, made in Italia. There you go. So I've got it through the hole. I'm gonna go on the other side, feed it on the back of the toilet, and then I'll come back over here and pull the excess and uh, cut it and put it on top of this uh, poop tank. Oh, it's double spiral. Stainless spiral. Look at that. All right, will you clip off the sharp ends of these, Kim? Yeah. And uh, when we're done with that. Come with me. I think I'm gonna cut a notch right here to allow the curve of this hose. Make sure these poop tubes are tight. All right, Kim, moment of truth. I need you to go over there and <laughs> flush the toilet. Okay. So I'm gonna, oh, I'm keeping the camera here. Okay. We're gonna see if it, I know it's not gonna leak on that side. We're gonna see if it leaks on this side. Okay. Wish us luck. Okay, ready? Ready. Filling the bowl. How full do you want me to get it? All the way. All the way. Twice. All right, go ahead and flush it. All right, give me another half a tank. Let me know before you flush. All right, so we know it's not leaking at the top, but I'll show you what it looks like when it dumps it and how ferocious it is. Are you ready? Yep, go ahead. Here it comes. That's not Kool-Aid and chocolate milk, people. So gross. But uh, no leaks here. No leaks on the other side. 
and uh, it smells like new rubber in here. So let's hope it stays that way for at least 10 years. All right, I've had about enough of that. I froze my butt off today and I just did poop and I cut fiberglass. My three least favorite things to do on the planet. I did all three of them on this project. Are we done? For the day? Yes. We can be done for the day. See you later, guys. Right here. All right, so this is the shower door that came out of the port forward head. And obviously we don't have room for it anymore because we took the wall out and uh, we don't need have any need for it. So I'm actually gonna cut it down. This is gonna be the base for the new freezer and washer and dryer. Repurpose, recycle, reuse. Green. So today is an exciting day because the washer and the dryer are going to be moved on board. Now, the challenge that we have is the wind is blowing, which is going to make it a little bit fun. And we don't want to try and step from the dock onto the boat because honestly, it's it's a, a blind faith sort of step when you're carrying something that weighs several hundred pounds that is a little bit bulky and awkward. And for safety reasons, we just don't think it's the best idea. So we're going to use one of the lines from the boom to be able to lift the washing machine from the dock onto the boat. So let's see if we can do this without breaking anything or hurting anybody. Yay, let's go. Right. And a dryer. All right, while Ty continues to work on outlets to improve our quality of life, I think we're up to outlets number six, seven, and eight. That would be the washer, the dryer, and the GFI that goes in the port forward head, which is now gonna be my laundry room. So while he works on that, I have to take, hi, ah. I have to take both of these off. And then we also have to do some demolition and remove the door jams here and here in order to have enough, oh, and the door, in order to have enough width to get the washer, the dryer, and the freezer down into their space. So I'm gonna kind of get into some tight spaces and see if I can do this without too much cussing and knuckle busting. Here I go. Yep. I don't know what that was. I should go find it. Yeah. You can't see it. I don't believe that I did. I just think that. Oh, 
I'll see if this side has one. This side doesn't have one. You broke them both? Shut up, I did not. I really hope I don't drop this wrench. I hope not, too. <laughs> I have to operate the wrench. It's an, a ratcheting end wrench, and I have to operate it with my pinky because there's not enough room for my hands to move. Uh-oh. Oh, shit. Four. All right, now with any luck, this guy will just come right out. Success! Well, there's a hole there. That's hey, bad. Go up. <laughs> Good job, babe. Thanks. I think we might need to get a little bit of rust remover, huh? Yeah. All right. And Ty's trying to kill me while he's running electrical and leaving floor hatches open <laughs> right at the bottom of the stairs. Proceed with caution. Yikes. All right, get this other side done, clean up this gel coat, and I'll have done my job and we'll be ready to get these guys operational today. Come on, baby. I'm gonna get pinged in the head, I just know it. No. Ta-da! Hooray! Done. All right, we're now to the outlet. Who knows, this is the washer and dryer. Now what's interesting about this is, is that I'm gonna put in one outlet for the washer and the dryer, and I'm gonna put them on separate circuits. And any of you household sparkies or DIY warriors out there that have done stuff at your own house know that when you take an outlet like this and you've got that little tab that's right there on the side, it's that little tab right here. What that does is, is it links the top and the bottom of the outlet together. So you can run a hot and a neutral on one of these sets of terminals and then it will carry the energy through to the other side of the outlet. Now, um, you're not supposed to daisy chain off of that to other outlets. That's a whole nother video we can get into later. But to be able to run two circuits of this, if we break that tab, it isolates the top and the bottom half of the outlet. So you can run two circuits with one outlet and have a more compact space. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put the washer on one, put the dryer on the other. They'll share one outlet, but two separate circuits. breaks it free just like that. That's with it and without. Also, when you're cutting the insulation off boat cable, uh, or even Romex at home, I'm really careful just to score the material and then pry it apart. I don't want to cut through the insulation on the outside and then the insulation on the individual wire and then nick it. And that adds a point of corrosion. We definitely want to avoid that. Throw a cover plate on it where no one will see it. All right, guys. There you go. So that's secured in. All these wires, I'll put strain reliefs here. Um, tie it to the strain relief here, and so on and so forth, down through the bottom. So now I just need to go tie them into the panel. I'll get that tied in, and I'll be back when we're putting this platform in. This must mean we're getting really close. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Oh, there it goes. 
Now I gotta hang on to these because they're warped and I have to make new ones. I think that's a little warped. Did it? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know that the camera picked that up, but yeah, it's... Banana! Banana! Apparently there's a screw I missed. <laughs> Oops. I think I can leave this one in. I don't think we have to... Well, I have to... Actually, it's... I might be able to sand it and repaint it in place. Yeah. It'll come off, but you gotta break the caulking. Uh, raw sure. banana! Oh, banana. Banana. Muscle. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and there's that. He's so strong. Oh my gosh. Kim had a great idea of repurposing the foot supports that were on the old washer and dryer, which is basically just a square with a hole drilled in the middle of it, that the feet of the washing machine would sit in or the washer dryer combo that they had to keep it from sliding around. So I thought, hey, that's a great idea. So I went and unscrewed it and lo and behold, do you think it fits? No. So I'm gonna jump on Fusion 360 right now. I'm gonna draw a new model for a new foot that fits our washing machine and throw them to the 3D printer and print them out and I'll show you what that looks like. Save this. All right, so that's complete. We're going to close this guy. Ah, import. All right, so now that we've got the part, what I want to do is I can take this guy and grab it. I'm going to make two of these guys. I'm going to make two at one time. Ty is going to drill through the wall and I'm not super thrilled about it, but in this particular instance, function is ahead of form. I want to make sure, Ty wants to make sure, that the washer and dryer are secure and aren't going to tip in any direction if we're in rough conditions or anything. So we're going to strap it and we're going to secure it to the wall and to the floor and it's going to have lots of anchoring points. So here we go drilling through the wall. Oh, that was so small. I have to drill through. We, we drill small holes for pilot holes and big holes from the side we need to drill. So we don't have blowout. Right. See, no blowy blowy. What? Goes the other way. Because <laughs> I'm reversing the process. So instead of using this as a U-bolt, where you normally put the plate here and it would pull down like this, I'm putting the nuts on the top side and then using this plate like a big washer or a backer plate, like so. And then you go through the wall, I'll put the cap nuts on, and then tighten this down so it pinches. And cracked the laminate. All right, guys, thanks for joining us this week. I think you've seen what a task it is to convert this, uh, well, this head into a really cool utility room. We're not quite done, so I'll see you guys next week when I fix the mistake that I just made and we drill another hole in the boat. I show you how we move everything downstairs and finish this awesome, awesome laundry room. Until then, I hope you guys have a great week and I'll see you guys next time.